Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Here in the UK we always celebrate the 5th of November with fireworks and explosives and that's going to be the topic of this video. To start off with, I want to think about why we commemorate this date in the first place. So Margaret Clitheroe lived on the Shambles in York and in 1586 she was put to death. The reason she was put to death was she was a practicing Catholic and she was harboring Catholic priests within her home and celebrating mass. And in that period of British history, Anglicanism had risen and there was serious discrimination against Catholics. At that time, Guy Fawkes was living just down the road from the Shambles on High Petergate. In fact, his birthplace has now been converted into a pub. And in 1586, Guy Fawkes was 16 years old. So you can imagine the death of Margaret Clitheroe, a practicing Catholic, had a major effect on Guy, who himself had just converted to Catholicism. Guy and his conspirators put together what's now known as the Gunpowder Plot, and in 1605 they attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament when King James I was about to open them. They filled the cellars under Parliament with gunpowder and attempted to blow up the King. Fortunately, the plot was discovered, the gunpowder made safe, and the destruction of Parliament prevented. From that day forwards, Guy Fawkes became a famous, infamous, personality and we now celebrate the 5th of November, the date of the gunpowder plot, by having bonfires and fireworks and explosions to celebrate the fact that Guy Fawkes failed in his attempt to overthrow the British government. So the gunpowder plot was wholly dependent on gunpowder itself. Gunpowder was developed in ancient China, it then travelled through to the Islamic world in about the 12th century and it ended up in Europe in the medieval period in the 1400s. Gunpowder has three key ingredients. Charcoal, or carbon, which is a basic fuel. Sulphur, which is also a fuel, but which lowers the temperature required to ignite the gunpowder. And saltpetre, a mineral, potassium nitrate, which acts as an oxidising agent and provides oxygen to the other components in the mixture and allows this mixture to burn and explode. Looking at this equation, we can see that carbon picks up oxygen to become carbon dioxide and potassium carbonate. This process is called oxidation. We can see that sulphur also picks up oxygen to become potassium sulphate. Again, it's oxidized. Where's all this oxygen coming from? Well, it's coming from the potassium nitrate. The nitrate is converted to nitrogen and so we describe the nitrate as having lost oxygen and having been reduced. This reaction occurs very rapidly and it generates a shock wave running through the material. And this shock wave transmits the reaction at high velocity and this is the first thing required for an explosion. Secondly, this reaction produces a lot of gas. The nitrogen, the carbon dioxide, lots of gas being produced, an increase in volume and that also leads to the explosive power of gunpowder. Now gunpowder is a mixture and making gunpowder to the exactly precise formulation was a real art. And in the mid 1800s organic chemists came along with a better solution to making explosives. You could gain all the components you needed within a single molecule. The first organic explosive was nitroglycerin. It was discovered by Ascanio Sobrero in 1847 at the University of Turin. And he was so shocked by the explosive power of this molecule that actually he published his results in a very obscure place and campaigned vigorously against its use as an explosive. Nonetheless, nitroglycerin was used as an explosive and there were numerous accidents where people blew themselves up. If we think about why nitroglycerin is an explosive, we can see that it contains nitrates and it contains carbon atoms. And we can imagine that the carbon can be oxidized and the nitrate groups can be reduced. And we could write a simple equation as I've shown here in the video. The first chemical problem I want you to think about is can you balance that chemical equation? Once again, you can see that the combustion of nitroglycerin generates a lot of gas 
required for explosion. And also, this reaction propagates itself with a shock wave going at high velocity, which causes the material to detonate. Now, it was Alfred Nobel who made nitroglycerin safe to use. He found that if you took nitroglycerin and you mixed it with what he called diatomaceous earth, which is effectively a kind of silica mineral containing fossilised tiny creatures and a few other minerals in there, that absorbing the nitroglycerin onto the diatomaceous earth made it safe to handle. And this material became known as dynamite. You could wrap it in waxed paper in the form of sticks, and if you dropped it on the floor, it wouldn't simply explode. Nitroglycerin is made by mixing glycerin with concentrated nitric and sulfuric acids. I want you to think a bit, if you're a chemist, about how that reaction actually works. Can you actually try and draw a mechanism for how the nitration of glycerin takes place? After the development of nitroglycerin, many nitrated explosives began to follow. One of the most famous is trinitrotoluene, you're looking at the structure here, otherwise known as TNT. For many years, TNT was not considered to be an explosive because it didn't have so much energy locked up in it, and it can be quite hard to detonate. In addition to TNT, there were other nitrated organic compounds which had significant explosive potential. For example, you're looking here at the structure of cyclotrimethylene trinitramine, otherwise known as RDX. And here you're looking at pentaerythritol tetranitrate, P-E-T-N, once again a nitrated organic compound, often used in a mixture with RDX, and the mixture of RDX and PETN is known as Semtex. Are there other ways of generating explosive organic molecules? Well, we're having a look at an explosive molecule now, cyclopropane, and it's an unusual molecular structure, a three-membered ring. If you're a chemist, I want you to think, why would that molecule be explosive? The final family of explosives that I want to consider are a very topical family of explosives. And this kind of explosive is widely used in terrorist atrocities around the world. This is the kind of explosive that was used on the 7th of July by the London bombers. The problem is it's quite simple to make. The difficulty of making it is that it's extremely unstable and you run a very good chance of blowing yourself to bits while you try and make this explosive. You'll notice that this compound does not contain nitro groups. Instead, it contains oxygen-oxygen linkages. If you're a chemist, I want you to think about why oxygen-oxygen linkages are weak and reactive. And I also want you to try and come up with a balanced equation for the combustion of acetone peroxide in air to give simple decomposition products and try and think what those simple decomposition products might actually be. One of the interesting features of acetone peroxide is it's difficult to scan for with existing explosive scanners, partly because it doesn't contain the nitro groups so common in all other classes of explosive. This is one of the reasons why you've been banned from taking liquids onto aeroplanes in recent years. A lot of work has been going into developing detection methods for this kind of explosive, and they're about ready now to come on stream, at which point some of the problems with terrorist atrocities from this kind of explosive will hopefully be mitigated. So since Guy Fawkes, one of the very earliest terrorists right through to the modern day, explosives can be used both for good and for bad. Of course, they allow us to mine things out of the earth, they allow us to control the built environment, they've assisted with space exploration, but on the downside, they have military applications and a potential risk to every citizen. And those are the reasons why people often feel a little ambivalent to the area of explosives research.